Good morning. Good morning. We will call to order the um, July 11th, 2018 budget workshop for the Indian River County Board of County Commissioners. We will have the invocation, which will be led by Commissioner Susan Adams, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance, led by Commissioner Joseph Flesher. Would everyone please rise? Thank you. We come together today asking for guidance, wisdom, and support as we begin this meeting. Help us to engage in meaningful discussions that allow us to grow closer as a community. Bless our efforts with clear insight, our deliberations with wisdom, and our work with clarity and accuracy. Continue to remind us that all we do here today, all that we accomplish, is for the greater good of our community and our fellow citizens. May our personal faiths give us the strength to act honestly and well in all matters before us. We ask in your name, amen. Amen. Please join with me in the Pledge of Allegiance to the greatest nation on earth, land of the free, home of the brave, the United States of America. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. For uh, folks in the audience and at home, we're going to be going through the budget. Um, generally, we take them in, in large categories, such as the general fund and MSTU and things like that. Um, we'll try to announce all the individual categories that we'll be covering at that time. But if anyone does have a question or there's a particular part of the budget you're interested in, please you know, raise your hand or get my attention. Uh, so make sure that we can get your input uh, before we move on too fast. So with that, we will go ahead and I'll turn this over to the County Administrator, Jason Brown, who will give us the, o the uh, overall uh, budget review. Good morning, Jason. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. Good morning, Commissioners. Uh, such an exciting day, always so exciting to <laughs> spend the day on the budget. I uh, hope everybody else is so excited. Uh, I'll, I'll start out with, uh, with, with a brief uh, description of the budget. Um, the total recommended budget, is that loud? Um, is $338,991,751. Um, that is the total all funds budget in it, which, which includes the taxing funds, but also includes, um, bless you, uh, enterprise funds and various other um, non ad valorem tax funded items. That's a $34 million decrease or 9.2% from our March 31st budget. Um, and this is our Commissioner Solari slide uh, that, we, that we do each year that shows that even though it's a 9.2% decrease from our mid-year budget, if you go back to the beginning budget before we added various grants we received and rolled over capital projects, uh, it's about a $10 million increase or 3.2% from that beginning budget. So some of the major things impacting the budget, we had a 6.93% increase in the tax roll for the, for the county uh, general fund budget. Uh, we have various different taxing entity uh, areas, such as the unincorporated area, that grew a little bit more, 6.98%. Uh, um, a, a large item that we will be discussing uh, in further detail this afternoon, the Sheriff's Department funding. Uh, the Sheriff requested a $4.2 million increase. Uh, my recommendation is a $2.5 million increase um, which, uh, which, which we believe should, should be enough to fund the additional school resource officer positions and provide some other increases such as salary increases and things like that that the sheriff is, is looking to do. Um, we do have a children's services increase, which is 56,000. However, if you recall, uh, last year we had a, a $250,000 addition from the, uh, from reserves to kick off our three year, this is part of the three year transition to the eighth of a mill. So the actual ad valorem impact of this is a $306,000 increase. Um, we have uh, 18 additional BCC positions and 16 uh, constitutional positions for a total of 34. Uh, the, the cost of the additional BCC positions is about $1.1 million. Um, you'll see throughout the budget the sale of the Vero Electric to Florida Power and Light is anticipated on October 1st. Um, so that is what we have budgeted. Uh, if there is a change there, we will we will amend the budget. But uh, all things we're hearing are uh, it's uh, 
all systems go for, for October 1. So we've budgeted a decrease uh, in our costs as well as a decrease in our franchise fees that we currently charge to City of Vero customers. When those folks have lower FPL bills, we will have a revenue decrease there. Um, and uh, so, so that will counter, counteract the savings. But as I've said, the, the, the reason the county's been supporting that isn't so much that the county organization itself will save money, um, although I think uh, once, the, once FPL's assets are added to the tax roll, we'll probably have a slight increase, but it's really been more about the, the millions of dollars a year and extra rates that our taxpayers and citizens and businesses have been paying uh, that, uh, that will, will be a benefit to our local economy and our local citizens. So uh, health insurance, we have made some adjustments the last couple of years, and the good news is no, no significant adjustments needed this year. Uh, there's not an increase in the employer contribution, nor an increase in the employee premium, which we've had to do uh, in, in previous years. Uh, OPEB, uh, we have some good news there. We've got a, a reduction of about $500,000 in our OPEB expense. That's due uh, in part to, uh, to two major factors. One is that we've had some good investment earnings over the last couple of years, and the health costs have not increased by as much as was anticipated uh, at the last study. So we are, we are realizing uh, some of the gains of setting those funds aside now, where you'll see a lot of places are dealing with increased uh, health care costs for their retirees and their current employees, we are seeing the benefits of setting that OPEB money aside. It's really starting to pay off now. Um, we are uh, also beefing up our technology, uh, adding a, a GIS position, also adding a cybersecurity position uh, as, uh, as our world with cybersecurity and ransomware and hacks and attacks have, 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 have been happening all over the place. We are trying to make sure that we are resilient to those types of attacks. Um, and nothing is absolute there, um, but uh, we, we need to make sure that we are doing the things to, to make sure that we're not a, a soft target. Um, so the proposed budget has also been developed while thinking about what's going to happen next year potentially. We've got Amendment 1 on the ballot, uh, and it's likely that will pass. So we've got some, some things that we're trying not to commit to, recurring expenses, uh, that can't be dealt with next year. There are a couple of one-time things, that we're, and we're looking at some, some potential savings. Uh, one of those is, relates to the school resource officers here is just a, a chart of the impact of Amendment 1. Um, it's a little over $3 million spread across our taxing funds, and if anything, I'd say that number is low because that was based on the 2016 tax roll, was, an was information we got from uh, Florida Association of Counties that was put together. Uh, so. The tax rolls have grown since then, so we think, if anything, that number is low. So it's at least $3 million impact uh, to our taxing funds. Uh, this is just our historic millage and taxable value. We'll move right through these pretty quickly. Um, and there's our population and our ad valorem. You can see the downturn there. We've talked about that numerous times. Um, and we'll look at the overall millages. You'll see that we have no increases in the millages. General fund, MSU, emergency services are all the same millages last year. The land acquisition bonds, which are levied countywide, um, like the general fund, are, are going down uh, by about 4%. So everyone should see a, a, a very modest decrease in the overall tax rate they pay to the county. Uh, next, we just uh, like to show how we compare to our surrounding counties. So our proposed millage there in green, uh, as it compares to those around us, St. Lucie, Osceola, Martin, and Brevard, and then the comparably sized counties uh, across the rest of the state. You'll see your, your Charlotte counties, Hernando, those uh, that have the similar population that we use as a, as a benchmark. So we are below all of those. We're always happy to see that. Um, another thing we always talk about, state mandates, uh, constitutional officers, funding state agencies uh, makes up about three quarters of our general fund budget. So uh, the, the board has the responsibility to levy the taxes to support all these things, but when you, when you look at what, what we control, there are certain mandates passed down from the state and certain other agencies that we, that we fund uh, and that, we may, that we have limited control over those amounts, uh, and we are responsible for about a quarter of that total amount. 
so here's the impact of the taxes on a typical house. So this is a $200,000 assessed value home with a $50,000 homestead exemption. Uh, for $150,000 taxable value, you'll see there, um, depending on where you live in the county, you pay different rates to us. Uh, but the, the one thing that makes it a little easier to explain this year than, than normal is everybody's going down a buck 92 because the land acquisition bond is going down by $1.92 and everything else is staying constant. Um, now, if, if, if someone is, is homestead, they may have a, uh, the, the, the homestead amount is going up about 2.1%. So uh, if, if there's an increase in assessed value by the, by the 2%, they will see a, an increase of a little bit less than that because of, the, uh, because of this decrease in the land acquisition bonds. So I think that is it for the budget message. And uh, I think we're ready to move on into the general fund at your pleasure. Okay, uh, commissioners, any questions for Jason on the overall budget message? Seeing none, okay, we'll go on, move forward with the general fund, please. So here we are, general fund, as we mentioned, the 6.93% tax increase uh, with no change in millage, uh, that gives us about 3.7 million additional dollars. Uh, the constitutional officers, based on the county administrator's recommendation, are an increase of about $3 million. That is less than what is requested. Um, if, if, we were, if we were to fully fund the sheriff, that, that number would go up. Uh, the state mandates we talked about, children's services, we've covered state agencies uh, are going up 270,000. The biggest chunk of that is Medicaid, uh, and that is uh, going up by over $150,000, and that is one of these uncontrolled, uh, or un was basically a mandate from the state, something that we have absolutely no control over. The state says this is how much you'll pay for Medicare, and that is based on, on some legislation that came through several years ago where we had had a dispute with, with the state about them not billing counties and somehow thinking that clairvoyantly we would know that they thought we still owed them money. Um, but we, we, had a, uh, we, we had legislation and now that number, they give us a fixed amount and it goes up every year based on the, the overall costs. Uh, we've got some facilities maintenance money in there. We've got some repainting and things like that at the libraries as well as some, some roof projects uh, as we are catching up on, the, on those things. So this is our, our, our pie chart for the general fund overall. Um, and I always like to point out the BCC department's 19.4%, an ever shrinking piece of that pie um, as the other agencies um, frequently get larger increases than, than our own departments over the last several years. Uh, and here is just, just to talk a little bit about the sheriff's budget is that is over 55% of our general fund budget. Um, this is common in the state of Florida, pretty much most counties, the sheriff is over half of the general fund budget. So it is a major driver in our general fund uh, taxing rate. Uh, so this chart basically shows how the budgets have increased or decreased over the years since 2007, 2008. And this is kind of busy, but if you bear with me, I have a, have a, have a, a graph that, uh, that will hopefully be a little bit clearer. But basically to start out, in 2008, 2009, if you go to the, to the second column, you'll see that the county department's budgets decreased by 5%. The sheriff's budget increased by 1.7%, not a significant amount, but you'll see that happening over and over again where the decrease is smaller in the sheriff's budget than the BCC departments or the increases are larger. Uh, and those have cumulative effects, basically. So if you go to the chart, you can see what has happened is that since 2007, 2008, the cumulative change over the last 11 years is that the sheriff, um, while the budget was, was reduced during the downturn, and we're thankful to the sheriff because he, was, he cooperated with us uh, very much during the downturn and did reduce his budget, um, the budget has, has recovered. Um, and likewise, our, our departmental budgets have started going back up from the, from the depths of the downturn, but the Cumulative effect is that over the last 11 years, the sheriff's budget's gone up 18.3%. Meanwhile, the BCC departments have gone down 8.6%. So uh, that, uh, that just kind of shows the cumulative effect of, of, of these things uh, where, you know, we'll typically hear that we need to prioritize public safety. And I think we hear that and we do that in practice. And this is just the long-term effect of that, that, uh, that each year, the more is allocated to public safety. So um, we, we, we hear 
that that is the top priority and we think it has been funded as, as, as the top priority. Uh, <coughs> then next we have just a little uh, general fund millage history shows how we, we uh, before in, in the good times we were reducing the budget um, and we've largely tried to keep the, uh, the, the millage rate the same during the downturn. We've had a few increases over the last couple of years um, and we're recommending no change for the current year and it is 5.3% above the rollback rate but no change from current. So that's the summary of the general fund. Uh, if you want me to keep going, we'll, we'll or, just or any questions so far, commissioners. All right. So, folks uh, in the audience, these are some of the um, categories that it's covered under the general fund. You can see uh, libraries in there, the county attorney's office, human resources, planning and development, veteran services. So, if anybody in the audience wishes to comment on any of these categories. Uh, this would be the time to come up to the podium and, and provide any input you would like. Mr. Chairman, one question on just in general on the sheet. When we see these numbers, if it's for a department's operations, that would be the full load of salaries, benefits, health, all the full carrying costs, that those are not going to appear somewhere else in the budget. Th that's correct. Okay. We, we show the salaries, the benefits, also the operating, you know, if it's you know, uh, like like the county attorney's office, it'll have office supplies in there. If it's the parks department, it'll have their expendable tools or whatever fuel they use and things like that. So everything's included in those. Yes. Great, thank you. And commissioners, anyone have any comments on the categories in front of us? Okay, Jason, we'll keep going. All right. All right, that's more of the department. So you'll see there at the end. Just uh, uh, um, the very bottom one there, the Indian River Lagoon. This is a, a new position. Um, Commissioner Adams had brought up this, and then Commissioner Slari said, "Well, let's go all in and hire a person to to do the lagoon uh, work." So um, I think it's important to point that out that over the years we've continued to to build projects and fund projects, and this I think is just keeping that tradition of that we are trying everything we can for uh, benefits of the lagoon. So. Um, just wanted to point that out. Right, and at this moment, that is an allocation. We're still trying to, you know, we got direction to to add that position, um, and we've put some funds into the budget. We're still formulating how we would how we would fund that and what what the reporting would be, and and just uh, just how that would best be accomplished. But we've set aside the money to to be able to accomplish that direction. Anyone from the public wish to comment on any of these categories? Chairman, one question under the FPL grant. Um, that is, is that the nuclear response grant or is it the Clean Energy Center training response reimbursement grant? Good or not grant, but I don't know what that other one got booked as. Good question. So this is the one that we get for the, for the nuclear power plant in St. Lucie County where, where we uh, do emergency planning for that and FPL funds a position and some operating expenses for that. The training for the clean energy, you'll see that is over in the emergency services district okay. fund. For, so it's training largely for, for fire rescue um, and that's budgeted over there. Okay, great, thank you. Okay, Jason. All right. Okay, if we're done with, with BCC departments. Next we have the constitutional officers. Um, First is the clerk of the court. Uh, the clerk has requested a million fifty-five thousand six hundred and forty-four dollars. That's a twenty-two thousand eight hundred and thirty dollar increase, or two point two percent, from the current year budget. Uh, staff is recommending the the full request, um, which is a, which is the increase. Um, tax collector's office. Uh, we are. Budgeting one million five hundred eighty-five thousand one hundred four dollars. That's an increase of one hundred twenty thousand uh, dollars. The tax collector's budget is not due until August first, and that is a fee officer, so it works a little bit differently than the other than the other budgets. Uh, we'll frequently leave this unchanged, but there was a mid-year budget amendment this year approved by the Department of Revenue, so we're just kind of kind of making a making an adjustment for that at this time. Prop I think there was some staffing increases there for some of the uh, some of the additional services that have been provided, uh, and and that was approved by. So that would only be an eight for us. Th that's that's correct. That would be an eight. That's two percent that needs to be. It's a significant increase. I couldn't figure out why the. 
it, it is a significant increase, and this is, this is one of the things you'll, the tax collector and the property appraiser, they technically submit their budget to the, to the Department of Revenue, and we can, we can have input in that process. However, uh, our input doesn't seem to be very loud in that process, so we, we, we normally those get, get approved to what, whatever's request. Right, yeah. So, so you know, frequently the state seems to think they can do a better job than than the locals, but uh, yeah. Yeah, it's hard to tell with these new lights. Thank you. All right. <laughs> So the property appraiser uh, is, uh, the budget is $3,111,125. That's an increase of $130,235 or 4.4%. Um, this budget is spread across the general fund as well as emergency services, land acquisition, and our, our SWID and street lighting districts. The bulk of it is paid out of the general fund, so we present it here. Uh, the sheriff. Uh, this is the, the proposed budget, this is the general fund amount, $49,798,375. We're recommending about uh, a little under a million dollars from sales tax and there's a couple hundred thousand dollars um, under the uh, 911. So the recommended amount is an even $51 million uh, compared to a $48.5 million even the current year, which is a $2.5 million increase. So this amount is just the general fund um, so just want to clarify that for everyone. Uh, and we, when we will be visiting the sheriff's budget later in the afternoon, and we'll, we've got a, a slide that kind of breaks that out better, the sheriff electric, um, which is broken out separately, we're seeing that go down by about $100,000 uh, for the FPL, the sale to FPL. Supervisor of elections has requested $1,368,525, which is an increase of $47,753, or 3.6%. Uh, staff is recommending the amount requested uh, for that as well. Value Adjustment Board is $60,000, no change. Uh, so those are the, the constitutional officer's budgets, and we have on the, on the, the uh, agenda here to cover all of those except for the sheriff at this time, and then we come back and cover the sheriff uh, this afternoon. Um, I'd like to thank all of these constitutional officers for submitting uh, what I would what I would term very responsible budgets. Um, they've been uh, they've been fiscally responsible and there's a lot going on in a, in a lot of these uh, areas which you you may hear from from those officers. You know one that, that jumps to mind supervisor of elections. There's a lot of things going on with election security and things like that and uh, and I think uh, very pleased to see a, a, a very reasonable increase there as well as across our other uh, constitutional officers overall. Thank you. Commissioners, any questions for Jason? Is there anyone in the public that wishes to comment on the constitutional officers? Good morning, Mr. Smith. Good morning, Chairman. Jeff Smith, Clerk of the Court. Comptroller, I just want to thank the board and Jason's off office and the budget office for the continual good relationship that we have, I wanted to point out that we've actually cut our FTEs by one, per one FTE in our budget, so I'm here for any questions that you may have for, for me. Okay, thank you, Jeff. Does anyone else wish to comment on the Constitution? Yes, sir, please come up to the podium. Good morning, welcome. Name and address for the record, please, sir. David Nolte, Indian River County Property Appraiser. Uh, I just would like to let you know or remind you that the North County, the county's putting in a North County office, which is going to require a large staffing. And that's why I believe the tax collector has so many positions in the budget is to fund the new office. Uh, we have prepared sort of ahead of time because we feel it's a long lead time to get our people prepared so we're ready to staff it. Uh, we've made those arrangements in the past. And I want to thank uh, Jason and uh, his staff. They've done a wonderful job. And uh, you guys have done a great job too. Great. Thank you, David. Thank you. 
Anyone else uh, from the public? Your mechanism is good to have a jacket on. Yeah, I know. I, 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 the jacket you threw me there. You threw us off base. <laughs> jacket yeah so okay uh, no one else from the public Jason we'll go ahead and move on to the uh, municipal service taxing unit thank you uh, so MSTU tax roll increase there 6.98 percent uh, which provides uh, about six hundred thousand dollars in additional revenue with no tax increase our biggest things here our biggest expenses in the MSTU are really transfers to uh, the transportation fund and transfer to fund law enforcement. So between the general fund and MSTU, they provide a significant uh, amount of funding towards the transportation fund, which they cover that which isn't covered by the gas taxes and, and, the, and the fee revenues that we receive there. Um, and then there is a transfer of a little under $19 million uh, for law enforcement to cover the, for the sheriff's budget uh, so that we are not double taxing those in cities for law enforcement that's provided in the unincorporated area. Uh, increase in communication services tax. Uh, this is this is following a, a two hundred thousand dollar cut in the budget this last year, um, but uh, I think our our decrease wasn't as large as we had anticipated. So we're 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 recommending a, an increase in that revenue estimate. Half cent sales tax is going up about five point four percent. And state revenue sharing is going up by three percent. And here's our MSTU millage history. So you see, back in 2005, 2006, 2007, we significantly decreased our millage rate here. You'll see it was over 1.5 mills back uh, in in the early part of the the century, and we are at 1.0733 now, um, and we're recommending no change. And here are the various departments funded uh, in the MSTU, uh, departments that provide services in the unincorporated area. For instance, our recreation departments, uh, since the cities have their own recreation departments, community planning uh, and development, our conservation lands, uh, and, uh, and, and various other expenses so that we do not double tax those in the cities. Overall, there is a decrease of about 300,000 there largely due to some decreases in one-time capital projects at the at the pools um, and the mid-year demolitions about a hundred thousand dollars of, of demolition money for condemned structures which you'll see there is in the poorly named road and bridge <laughs> department um, but that's where we have budgeted that that expenditure for several years okay commissioners any questions on MSTU yeah, Commissioner Fly? Jason in terms of deferred maintenance from the from the downturn particularly uh, specifically in both parks and recreation, where are we on catching up with that, would you say, roughly? I mean, are, are we almost there? Are we you know, still some years away? I'd, I'd say we're about two-thirds through. We've, we've, we've done more than half on, on, on our deferred maintenance overall, um, but we've, we've got about a third or so left to go on deferred maintenance. I will say that wouldn't include um, the things like the the conservation lands, where that it's it's not really a deferred yeah. maintenance. It's uh, we never put in infrastructure that we should have put in. So if you include that, we're we're probably more like 55, 60 percent through. Uh, and if you include that, you're probably about five to seven years away. Best. Oh, it's several. Yeah, it'll take us several years. To, that, to bring in that, and in the other, how many years away where you think it might be before we catch up to that? Deferred maintenance. I think in a couple of years, we'll in, in the next years. couple of years, two, okay. two, three years, we should be caught up. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Anyone else? Is there anyone from the public that wishes to comment on any of these categories? Um, Commissioner, I did want to Commissioner, I did want to go back. Um, I see a couple folks here from Veteran Services, and we did cover that under the uh, general fund. I don't know if you all had any questions about it, or you're okay with the funding, or wanted to speak, but we we're We've already moved past the veteran services, so I don't know. We, yeah, come on up. We do have a we do have a spot under under the in the next upcoming section for we, we have the veteran services office was the VCC department, and we do have if you'll see under nonprofit organizations we've got a spot okay. for veterans for the veterans council itself. Next but spot. we can at, at, at yeah, your. Never mind, Saj. 
<laughs> I'm getting ahead of myself, sorry. <laughs> okay, so any other comments on the MSTU? Okay, seeing none. Uh, Jason, we'll move on to the transportation fund. So transportation fund, budget $16.7 million, uh, basically flat, um, but you know, we get to have a, life, a little decrease of 0.1%. So we've got four additional positions. Um, two of those are to add a drainage crew that will help us uh, maintain our drainage uh, systems in the county better than we have been able to do over the last couple of years. Um, certain areas like Bureau Lake Estates need some additional attention. We've been working on that, but there's a significant amount of work to go. Um, so two of those positions are for that. Uh, we have also recommended a, uh, an assistant uh, public works director position that will uh, be used to help oversee road projects as well as um, provide some additional support in the permitting process. And then the fourth position is an additional grader um, as directed by the board to address our, our our unmaintained roads and our in our in our, in our dirt road grading program. Um, our gas taxes are going up a little bit, about 1.4 percent on the constitutional gas tax, and county gas tax up about 1.9 percent. And here's the impact on the departments. Um, you'll see a decrease here, but once again, that is largely tied to some significant capital uh, that was purchased in road and bridge this year. Um, and uh, so some of it replacement, and then we're moving forward with, a, with a, a grader and things like that in the current year so that we can, because of the lead time there, so that we can have that ready for, for the person when they get here in October. Um, similar thing going on in traffic engineering with, with some grants that we receive for uh, maintaining the, uh, the, the traffic system. Okay, commissioners, any questions of Jason? Is there anyone in the public that wishes to comment on any of the categories under the transportation fund? Okay. Jason, move on to emergency services. So total emergency services district budget is $39,833,786. That's an increase of about $281,664 or 0.7%. Tax roll here grew by 7.17%, which gives us an additional 2.1 million in revenues. Uh, our ALS revenues continue to go up. Uh, this is reflective of the call volumes. We've, we've got a growing uh, population and, and it's growing in number and, and also growing in age. So our, our number of ALS calls has increased. Uh, and fortunately, the, the ALS revenue tied to that is, has increased as well. Um, capital outlay, we've got a significant amount of capital outlay here. Uh, including some rolling stock, I think is about uh, 1.2, 1.3 million dollars in rolling stock. We've also included a million dollars for, uh, to set aside money for land uh, as we're, we're trying to move forward with purchase of, of land in the next couple years for our temporary station locations, one of those station seven uh, this year, and then uh, station 15 going forward. Uh, the budget includes funding for an additional trades worker position to help out with, with um, station maintenance. I will say our, 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 our folks at Fire Rescue do a lot of extra duty, you know, when it comes to painting the, the stations and doing some minor improvements. However, we need to make sure that we're staying on top of those facilities. Um, we have 15 different locations and we, um, we, we are beefing up our, our, our maintenance abilities there at the, uh, at the stations. So that uh, so that we um, can can stay on top of the the the, the work that ne that is needed at the stations. We're also restoring a part-time courier position that was cut during the downturn, uh, which helps just with with moving paperwork and supplies back and forth to the various different stations. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Jason, you mentioned a million dollars for future site selections. Um, when we get to that, I think having some kind of site selection coordination obviously with the new chief to look at forecasting planning where ideally where we should be on those and try to get a a more competitive acquisition of sites i think would you know just be proactive 
Right, and and we are we are um, you know going through that process of of trying to analyze the the potential area where we could find a site. Of course, there's no perfect site. Um, we always look for the best site we can. Um, the perfect site may not be available for sale, or the price may be too much. Uh, so we, we're looking at these things. We're also working to see if we can. Um, we've had discussions with uh, with Jason Nonemaker at the city of Felsmere as far as Station 15 about some potential donated sites. If we can do something like that 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 works for us, that's definitely uh, preferable to us having to go out and buy something. We've we've had some success uh, with with that in the past. Uh, and uh, keeping our, our costs down for, for a new location. Thank you. And Jason, on the uh, the rolling stock, are we back on schedule now with our replacement plan? I think we were in year five of the catch-up. Right. We have hit year five of our five-year catch-up. Um, so we are caught up there. That was one of the earlier, earliest things that we, that we embarked on catching up because obviously it's a high priority to make sure that we've got uh, uh, rolling stock for our, for our public safety folks. Um, we still have some. We still have a maintenance. We still have a regular replacement plan that we need to stay on, and that five-year plan addressed our primarily our engines and our ambulances. There's some other support vehicles like brush trucks that that were not part of that plan. We're catching up with that, and we're also pursuing uh, some grant opportunities for that. But uh, we have uh, we are in year five of our five-year catch-up plan. Okay, so specifically, our engines and ambulances were. We'll be next year. We'll be right on our we normal uh, good replacement go. schedule. Okay, great. Yeah. Thank you, commissioners. Any other questions, comments for Jason on emergency services? Is there anyone from the audience that wishes to comment on the emergency services district? Okay, we'll move on, Jason. Right. Next up, we have state agencies. Um, this is, this is where we fund various, various entities, uh, New Horizons, State Health Department, um, Medicaid, as I mentioned about the, the, the sixth lying down there, uh, $151,683 or 14.1% increase. That's, we get a nice little note from, uh, from the state saying, here's your amount for next year. Um, enjoy it, uh, <laughs> uh, which, which is similar to the Department of Juvenile Justice, just above that. Um, we also uh, have various uh, responsibilities for the court program. Uh, you'll see here circuit court expenses uh, showing a decrease here in the general fund, but the, the, this is only part of the funding. There is uh, other funding sources for our court system, uh, for court technology and facilities uh, that we have fully funded. We're recommending the full request for circuit court, guardian ad litem, uh, victims assistance, state attorney, public defender, uh, medical examiner. Uh, there is in guardian ad litem, we're beginning to set aside some money for a potential uh, facility that they're trying to plan in the city of Fort Pierce. Right now, we've previously, they, they've been leasing a, an office location in Port St. Lucie, which is, is uh, a higher rental rate than, than we would like. Uh, so the, the, the four counties have have agreed in concept to uh, to filling in some shell space that's available at uh, the city of Fort Pierce City Hall that we think in the long run will be uh, beneficial to to uh, the taxpayers of the, of the whole circuit. Um, I think everything is fully funded here uh, as requested, with the exception of the state health department. Uh, we're recommending a seven and a half percent increase, and I think they requested a ten percent increase. Um, but the total state agencies were, were we've got an increase there of about three hundred thousand dollars. Commissioners, any questions for Jason? Jason, on the state health department, um, since you mentioned it, they requested six hundred ninety-six thousand, and you're recommending six hundred and eighty. I would like to see us uh, go ahead and fully fund them. I think the health department just does a phenomenal job, and and the state keeps cutting their budget. And I just think that the services they provide, um, and and you know, Miranda does a great job running that. They're they always have a positive attitude, and they and they are they're serving many of our most needy residents. So, commissioners, I don't um, if no one for that. I, I don't think we need a formal motion, but if I can get at least three nods to do the 16, I'll I'll be happy. 
Okay, if I could just add that, I mean, it, in actuality, I think if the health department is running well, the cost to our community would be less than the 16, that would, 16, well, the, the savings to our community would be greater than the $16,000 spent, so I'm happy to support that. Yep. I think I got, um, I got five nods here, Jason, for that, so we'll, okay. you guys can take care of that, please. Thank you. Um, anyone from the public that wishes to comment on any of the state agencies? Good morning, welcome. Your name and address for the record, please. Um, good morning, uh, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners. Myra Zalehi, 19th Judicial Circuit, Deputy Court Administrator. Uh, I just want to thank the, the county for its continued and substantial support of all our court operations. Great, thank you very much. Anyone else? Good morning, welcome. I'm Cheryl Dunn. I'm with the Florida Department of Health here in Indian River County, and Miranda could not make it this morning, but she wanted to express her appreciation of your continued support of our department. So thank you very much. And Cheryl, you can go back and tell her how hard you fought for that extra 16,000, <laughs> too. I'll do that. <coughs> Anyone else wish to speak? Yeah, please, come on up. Good morning, welcome. Good morning, my name is Annette Gosselin. I'm the Chief Financial Officer for New Horizons and we also wanna thank the County Commission for your continued support. We really appreciate it. We serve over 2,100 individuals, um, children and adults in the county and the funding that you provide us help leverage state funding and bring that to the county for the individuals who you know, cannot pay or are underinsured. So it, it really makes a big difference. Um, we appreciate it, thank you. Yeah, Any I know. I know John Romano's in St. Lucie County. Yes, he's in St. Lucie County, um, yes. And I guess he's retiring at the end of this year. He is, yes, yes. Um, We're searching the, hard uh, for a new and hopefully as um, competent as John CEO. Right, yeah, so good luck on your search. Thank you so much. Okay. Appreciate right. it. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, just wanted to give one other thanks on the health department for the great job managing the rabies uh, situation that we went through in the South County area. Their response was was uh, just over the top and professional and, and got that taken care of and, and I think things are pretty much back to normal now. Great, good, thank, thank you. you. Anyone else wish to comment? Good morning, welcome. I'm Dr. Middleton from Medical Examiners and I just wanna thank you for your continued support over the years. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you for all you've done. Anyone else uh, from the public wish to comment on the state agencies? Okay, Jason, we'll move on. All right, thank you. Um, just an aside on the health department, we were talking about that, you know, they do so many things for disadvantaged in the community. One of the things I got a chance to see was some of the planning that they do for um, epidemiology, like when the Zika virus was coming in. Uh, there's a reason that those outbreaks are contained and don't spread and they do a tremendous amount of planning and the infrastructure there that's in place to make sure that uh, that that those uh, those diseases that 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 folks fear um, are are uh, are kind of nipped in the bud before they become a problem so it's impressive to see them do that and that's a, a tremendous value to the to the community yeah. um, economic development uh, it, the budget is one hundred eighty seven thousand two hundred fifty dollars uh, that is an increase of 21.96 or 1.2% uh, recommended as requested. Okay. Um, Helene, did you want to comment or? Okay, we're good. She's good. All right, children's services. Uh, this is the uh, amount that was determined by the board, uh, $1,600,000. $63,965, an increase of $56,000. Uh, as mentioned before, it's a $306,000 impact due to the one-time funding from last year. Um, this is, uh, and the individual agencies are all, the amounts are determined by the Children's Services Advisory Committee and uh, in, in accordance with, with this budget. Very good. Did we run good? All right. Yep. Next we have our uh, CRAs. Uh, we have uh, actually three CRAs, two in the city of Sebastian and one in the city of Felsmere, and those are based on the changes in the, in the ad valorem taxable value. Uh, what we're uh, estimating for the Sebastian CRA is $210,000, an increase of $25,120, and the Felsmere CRA is $12,000, up 
$933. Mr. Chairman? Uh, Commissioner Flores. And this is another one of those items over which we have no control. I mean, we, correct. My understanding is they, they set this up under state statute, and once the municipality sets up an area in their community for a CRA, then it's basically on autopilot, and we just do the math each year and figure out how much we basically remit to the municipality or wherever the CRA is so that they can spend the money. So again, I, one of the great problems for me going forward is the fact that over the past year, since I've been sitting here, the amount of our budget that is basically mandated has gone up by at least 5% from something like 69% to 74%. And that just makes our job on the margin harder and harder each year. So thanks. I, I share your concern there. That was a rather but you feel it quite like I, it. I feel it. I feel <laughs> it. That was a rather brief diatribe, Commissioner. Yeah, I'm just working my way up for this Warming afternoon. Warming up for the <laughs> afternoon. Okay, good. Let's pace ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. Uh, next, we have our nonprofit organizations, uh, and the, these funding amounts are per the uh, policy that was uh, that was established last year, where we have set the nonprofit organizations that we currently do fund. Um, and we adjust those each year based on based on changes in, in the price indexes. Uh, the Mental Health Collaborative is uh, $23,421, up 2%. United Against Poverty, 10453 up 24 Same thing for 211. Veterans Council, uh, $86,300, up 2140 <laughs> That's up 2.5%. Uh, and keep Indian River beautiful, which provides services for for solid waste uh, for recycling and, and cleanup, fifty two thousand eight hundred thirteen dollars up four point five percent. Thank you, commissioners. Any questions on this? Anyone from the public wish to speak on any of these nonprofits? Yes, come on up. Good morning. Welcome. I'm Angela Gazinski. I'm with Mental Health Association. It's oh. association, not collaborative. Sorry, you're that's okay. <laughs> um, on behalf of Mental Health Association, I want to just thank you for the support that you give us because it allows us to have that immediate access to mental health screenings as well as crisis interventions, and it's free of charge for Indian River County residents. So we truly appreciate that because there's a lot of crisis and need in the community, and they can come in immediately and seek help. Great. Thank you. Thank you for all you do. Appreciate it. Come on up. Yes, ma'am. Welcome. Welcome. Good morning. I'm Sharon Lurie with the 211 Helpline, and I also wanted to echo our appreciation for your ongoing support. Last year, we were able to assist over 4,000, answer over 4,000 requests for help from Indian River residents because of the support. Um, we work closely with the community here. We are um, embedded in the mental health collaborative. We are working with the newly formed senior collaborative. We work closely with the sheriff's office on a number of initiatives. So we are there in the community serving the people here and we wanna thank you for allowing us to do that. Great, thanks for all you do, appreciate it. Chris? <coughs> Hi, Curtis Paulson, first vice president of Veterans Council. I'm gonna let Pat Geyer, um, she is the chairperson of the Veterans Outreach Program and also our grant writer. I'm gonna let Pat speak to that real quick. Yes, we asked for the 2.5% increase and we are looking to maintain the service and maybe even grow the service a little bit to our veterans five days a week, taking them to medical appointments down in West Palm Beach and locally. And we wanna maintain the quality of our staff. Thank you. Thank you very much. And um, first off, I'd like to thank everybody for the golf tournament. As you all know, we buy our own vehicles, um, and it's a, it's a huge undertaking, obviously. But um, from what I heard, I guess um, Jason shot seven under, so he did a great job. <laughs> but um, I want to thank each and every one of you for the support that you guys give us each and every year. Um, the tournament was a monster. Obviously, we broke a record. We had 160 golfers, and all the funds from that will go to our buses. Um, one thing that's unique about Indian River County that's different than the counties that we deal with is that we take our local veterans also to their appointments. So we do approximately 250 runs a year, approximately say 5,000 veterans go down to West Palm Beach, but we also use our local doctors. And because of you, we're able to do that. We're St. Lucie, Martin, 
and uh, Palm Beach County aren't able to do that. So for that, we thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you for all the efforts you guys do for the, the veterans. We appreciate that. And really Chris, I want to thank you for the golf tournament too, but you forgot to mention that Commissioner Fletcher and I did a good job uh, for the golf course by not playing. Uh, yeah. keeping it in shape. That's what Dalla told me. He said he kept it. <laughs> they it would have raised a lot of funds if we played. Well, it would have been a little damage to the course. <laughs> <laughs> it was a great event. We thank you guys so much. And um, I'll be back in front of you probably in a month or so. We are going to have a picnic. I, I know I spoke to quite a few of you the other day at the, um, uh, over at the Intergenerational. And um, it's our way of giving back to the community. So we'll be talking to you very soon. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you, Charlie. Good morning, welcome. Good morning, commissioners. My name is Daisy. I work with Keep Indian River Beautiful, and we just wanted to take this time to thank you so much for supporting everything that we do. And um, over the last few years, we've quadrupled our services for the community, um, doing more cleanups, more tree plantings, restoration projects at JC Beach, and uh, your support has, has really made that possible, and we thank you very much. Chris Woodruff, I just wanted to thank you guys um, for all your support. It's really fantastic. It really makes it all possible. How's the uh, new store come along? Oh, it's a it's actually fantastic. Where the the level of donations has risen, um, and just the community, just new people finding us that um, never realized we were there to begin with. So it's the awesome. new store is located on the corner of 16th and Old Dixie. Um, right across the street from the chocolate factory. So, yeah. Just don't go on Wednesdays because then you don't get the ice cream next door. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for all you do. Anyone else uh, in the audience wish to speak on the nonprofits? Okay, Jason, we'll move on. Now on to quasi nonprofits. These we call quasi nonprofits because they are performing a function that we would be uh, essentially uh, would would be required to to perform uh, for the most part. Uh, if if these agencies weren't doing that, the first is the Senior Resource Association. Uh, the recommended amount is one million one hundred and fifteen thousand eight hundred dollars. That's showing a decrease of fifty thousand. However, it's uh, there was uh, some eight, it was about eighty thousand dollars in sales tax for some additional bus shelters in the current year. So the ongoing operating increase is about thirty thousand, uh, and uh, and so that is recommended as requested. Next is the grants that we receive mid-year. So you'll see um, the the current year there's about one point six million dollars in grants, and that's only a portion of the grants that we've will receive throughout the year, and we start with zero because we don't have them awarded for next year. Uh, Senior Resource Association Senior Services, uh, like on the uh, nonprofit side, this is for the uh, non-transit related services provided by SRA, like your Meals on Wheels. So that is $123,700, up 4,090 or 3.4%. Gifford Youth Achievement Center, uh, 97,840, up 2.4%. Progressive Civic League, 12,185, no change. Uh, Humane Society, 395,547, no change. And Treasure Coast Homeless Services, 15,070, <coughs> no change in that amount either. Good. Commissioners, any questions? Is there anyone in the audience that wishes to comment on any of these agencies? Good morning, welcome. Karen Deagle, CEO of the Senior Resource Association. I just want to say thank you for your support, ongoing support of transit and the um, programs, Meals on Wheels, Adult Daycare, um, the match dollars that you give us. Um, all those programs do add quality of life to individuals in our community. So thank you to the commission and thank you to um, staff for working with us so closely in all of these uh, programs. Great. Thank you, Karen, for all you do. Um, anyone else wish to comment on the agencies? Oh, there's one. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, ma'am. Come on, please. Welcome. Excuse me. I'm so sorry. I must have just missed the boat here. I'm from the public defender's office. Oh. I'm here for Diamond Liddy. She sends her regrets. She couldn't be here. I'm Pat Armold, her administrative director. And I, I realize everyone is saying thank you, but trust me, she thanks you too. Um, you know, we try very hard to keep our budgets down and, and 
rotate our expenses so if we if nothing else don't have an increase but trust me she would be telling you all thank you herself personally for your support Good. thank you for being here and you're welcome anyone else okay Jason we'll move on all right next is the Dory Slossberg Drivers Education Safety Act uh, we provide funding uh, from the uh, from the, the tickets for for drivers education through this program uh, that that the board reinstated a, a couple years back. Uh, we're recommending forty eight thousand to the school district and a nine thousand dollar reserve co for contingency. Uh, no change from the current year. Okay. Any comments from the bo board? Any comments from the audience? Okay, Jason. We'll move on. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Come on up. Please, thank you. Good morning, welcome. Good morning. Thank you very much for the grant for the, on the Dory Slosberg Fund for driver's education. There was funding 45 students to take driver's education with Treasure Coast Driving this year. Um, it is a great opportunity for those students that they actually get the opportunity to drive behind the wheel as opposed to some of the online driving courses which does not include a driving component. Uh, the school district and the students greatly appreciate it. Dr. Jones has retired, so they have asked me to step in and accept this and uh, express our appreciation. Good. And if you could just give your name for the record, please. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Michael Arnett. Thank you very much. Thank Great. you. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Hey, Jason. All right. Um, next up, and I, I keep neglecting, there's a page number at the top there, so if you're, if you're following along, it's page, page 36 here. Um, land acquisition bond fund. Uh, the proposed budget is uh, $4,684,226, a decrease of 95, or an increase of $95,518. Uh, this is where we're recommending a millage rate decrease to 0 0.2827 mills, which is down about 4.3% from the current year. Okay, Commissioner? Anyone from the public? Okay, Jason. Now I'm um, turn it over to, to Mike uh, for for the for the street lighting districts. Office. There we go. Uh, amidst the street lighting districts, there are seven districts that, with uh, recommended decreases, largely a function of uh, the <coughs> proposed sale that's pending now uh, from uh, Vero Beach Electric uh, to FPL. Uh, uh, we would expect to uh, see uh, reductions in the rate. So uh, the units uh, with reductions are Gifford. It would go from 25 to $23, a difference of $2. Uh, Rock Ridge goes from 8 to $7. Corpus Point goes from 11 to $10. Uh, the Mooring Street Lighting District goes from 10 to $9. Walker's Glen goes from $22 to $20. Uh, Floralton Beach goes from $50 to $46. And Oceanside uh, goes from $57 to $51. The remaining districts are uh, held constant at the rates uh, that were charged in FY18. Okay, Thanks. and we look forward to Commissioner Adams reading those off when we get to the formal budget hearings I am I'm practicing all right very good um, thank you okay we'll move on uh, the next page is the uh, MSBU's Bureau Lake Estates that's a per parcel acre charge uh, it remaining constant at $50 East Gifford stormwater MSBU is remaining constant at $10 that's a per parcel acre charge and Oceanside street paving MSBU is a per lot charge of $450, and there's no change there as well. Okay, thank you. Any questions? Okay, we'll move on. Okay, um, enterprise funds. Uh, these are the the funds where we are are operating more more as a private business, and the and the operations are are intended to pay for themselves with uh, no support from taxpayer dollars. Uh, Golf course, $2,951,763. That's an increase of $56,231. Uh, 
uh, things are going well there. No rate increase uh, recommended at this time. We have not changed our rates there in, in many years. Building department, $4,498,775. That's an increase of $473,483. Uh, we're funding, I think, three additional positions here to provide uh, support to the, to the growing workload. Um, building support specialist type positions uh, intended to take some load off of the uh, off of plans examiners and building inspectors as we continue to have challenges with recruitment here. There's no increase in building permit fees uh, recommended at this time. I do want to go back to, to something uh, as far as development review fees. We're, we're looking at development review fees which wouldn't impact the building department itself. Um, but uh, we're working that through the, de the development review committee um, and we hope to bring something back to the board on that. Uh, we haven't changed those fees since 2004. Uh, staff is recommending an increase in those. Uh, however, that is still working its way through the development review uh, committee and uh, once that is complete, if uh, there, there we will likely bring a recommendation to the board uh, sometime during uh, fiscal year 18-19. Next is utilities, uh, $42,726,110. That's a decrease of $55,488. Uh, we have a net increase of four positions here to increase, uh, to serve the growing utility and, and make sure that we're staying on top of renewal and pr replacement there. Next is utilities impact fees. Uh, and that's just a function of what we're estimating coming in for uh, impact fees in order to fund expansion of our capital facilities. That's two million one eighty six four twenty five, an increase of eight hundred and twenty three thousand six hundred and fifty dollars. That's enterprise funds. Thank you, Jason. Mr. Chair. Mr. Chairman, um, two questions. One on the <coughs> utility impact fees. Just doing some rough math, that equates out to about one hundred and twenty five single family units that are connecting to water and sewer, and I think the trend line growth is probably closer to to 200 on that number, so that may, and you know, looking at it hindsight, may end up being a little bit bigger. But secondly, is there any other candidate departments for future enterprise fund consideration? I know the range has been talked about as trying to get it up to where it could become an enterprise fund. We, <coughs> we have we have always, you know, at one time the shooting range was an inter enterprise fund. Our hope is to get that to a point where uh, it's paying it all the fees and unlike many recreation facilities and programs, it funds the majority of that. We, we haven't gotten there yet um, and uh, we're hopeful with some additional um, marketing and as the word spreads about the new uh, Biscuit and Trap facilities and, the Hunter and with the Hunter Safety and Education building um, that we will be be able to grow that and maybe maybe someday get that to where it is uh, an enterprise fund again. I think it's funding about 80, 85 percent of its cost right now. So it's close. Um, and, and there have been years, about four or five years ago, we, we actually did reach break even there, but it's just the business changes and, and bounces around there. And we're, we're hoping to get that to a sustainable place where we can do that. Okay, great. Thank you. Any other comments? Anyone from the public? Okay. I'm sorry, yeah, Mr. Johnson, please come up. Um, the uh, Corrigan Ranch was annexed by Bellsmere uh, this year, uh, yet we see the uh, cost uh, to the county on services uh, uh, going up. It would seem like uh, that the, some of the responsibilities uh, that were previously uh, held by the county, but now annexed to uh, Bellsmere, they would be taking and assuming some of the uh, uh, financial responsibilities. Uh, is that is that a true statement, or is that something that's? Uh, is there anything any areas where? Uh, uh, I don't see any as we go through the process where uh, Bellsmere. Uh, has picked up any of the responsibilities like uh, fire hydrants, for instance, or uh, things like that. In other words, we, we're increasing on personnel. Uh, so, Mr. Johnson, I think most of the Corrigan property is just open rangeland for the cattle. 
Um, although Felsmere is included in our emergency services district, so the hydrant maintenance would, would still be part of that. Um, about the only other thing that might change, and the, the sheriff might be able to answer this, but their, um, their uh, grove and, and ranch patrol may not um, cover that anymore because that would be under the Felsmere Police Department. But I think that's about the only service we would provide to the Corrigan property at this time. Thank you. Okay, thank you. <coughs> Any other comments from the public? Okay, Jason? I, I neglected to mention, I just want to touch on the utilities. We, we're working on a rate study that we plan to bring to the board this year. Um, it, uh, the, the way it uh, is right now, uh, there, the operating rates would be revenue neutral, so we're not looking at an increase. Um, and the impact fees, we're looking at the, at the same thing there, no significant change. Uh, to those amounts, uh, we're still working on the on the final details of that. But just want to let you know that we do have a rate study that's pending in utilities. But we are are happy to report we can report at this time that we're not going to be recommending uh, rate increases for operating or the impact fees, which I think is 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 an excellent thing um, since we haven't changed our rates since 1999. Um, but I uh, just just wanted to make make sure everyone was aware that the, we do have a rate study coming on that. Um, one question on that. <coughs> on the, the one element that we will be looking at that may or may not have a change in cost is the renewal and replacement portion of utilities lines that age out, hydrants that you age out or meters, and that is included in part of that study? Right, we are anticipating that. Um, okay. Yeah, and, and what we will, what we will, what we will be recommending likely is is also that we have a uh, the ability uh, to review for a CPI increase going forward. So we're not looking at an increase this year, but we're we're going to need to make an evaluation of whether that's needed each year um, going forward. Because we've been fortunate, we haven't had to raise our rates in 19 years. I doubt we'll be able to do that for another 19 years. So we're going to need to have that flexibility to to make adjustments going forward uh, for those things. Uh, a lot of a lot of which will be the, the renewal and replacement costs. But Thank you. To, to clarify, I'll build on Commissioner Zor's comments. My understanding is, though, that the renewal and replacement monies that we may be spending and even the new monies for the arm and stuff like that uh, will be captured by existing uh, fees and charges. So we take that into account. We've got reserves that are building up so that we'll be able to handle those type of expenses as they come due. Without raising the rates. C correct. We have been we have been doing that. We've been funding that, and we're we're I not. I just wanted the, the customers to know that because it was, uh, for me it wouldn't have been clear if you were listening to okay. us at, at home. Yes, they, those are anticipated. We're not looking at an increase for those. Thank you. Okay. Internal service funds, uh, pages fifty one and fifty two. Uh, first is fleet management, three million six hundred and thirty five thousand seven hundred eighty four dollars. That's an increase of sixty one thousand seven hundred and seven dollars. Uh, risk management, this is where we, we cover our insurance uh, costs and, uh, and various expenses such as workers' comp and property and casualty insurance, $4,859,298 up $81,865. Employee health insurance, $19,689,384. That's down about $6.3 million, and that is really down because of a one-time uh, accounting recognition of the of the additional OPEB payment that we made uh, a couple of years ago. Um, next is GIS and in information technologies, $2,128,515. That's an increase of $352,636. Uh, we have an additional GIS position, as mentioned, an additional um, cybersecurity related position, and then a half a position uh, that uh, was Previously, an, a support position that was previously split between purchasing and um, and IT, and we will we're recommending one for each of those departments going forward. So, uh, overall, thirty million three hundred twelve thousand nine hundred eighty-one dollars. Thank you, Jason. Commissioners, any comments, questions? Anyone from the public wish to comment on the internal service funds? Okay, um, <coughs> commissioners, that concludes our morning agenda. 
We have a 1.30 p.m. public hearing for the Solid Waste Disposal District and also the, uh, the Sheriff's budget and then some miscellaneous um, funds and debt service. What I would recommend is we'll take a brief break right now, come back in 10 minutes, and then we'll, if everyone is uh, on board, we'll go ahead and move up the miscellaneous funds and the debt service capital projects and get those done. And then we'll, in the afternoon, we'll just have the public hearing and the sheriff. Is that suitable for everybody? Okay, great. We'll take a 10-minute break.